John says, I couldn't look at the crowd, John 1, and I couldn't pick him out. Uh, he's he's no he's just the same as everyone else I was seeing. And it was God that had to speak to John and say, he's the one. And then John points, points people to follow Jesus. What's another area can we know about Jesus? Yeah, early in his ministry. So we have this baptism situation where he's kind of going public with uh, with who he is. And and Jesus doesn't assert who he is. What What's interesting is you read the passages, uh, God speaks right into that situation and points to Jesus. Like, he's my man. And God, God identifies Jesus as his man. Right after all that happens, Jesus kind of pulls away, goes off alone, and spends spends 40 days in the desert. And it's a period of time known as known as his temptation. But I think one of the things we can learn from that is Jesus struggled with temptation. And, and what is temptation? So that's Wait, a, maybe Jesus it's a weird word. Jesus had to word. fight with temptation? Yeah, Jesus had to fight with temptation, right? Uh, that, in a, in a sense, should be a surprise to us. Um, but he struggled with temptation. And temptation is basic senses. You know what is right, and yet you feel the push to do something you know is wrong. And that's his basic sense. And if you understand it that way, where, where we as people say, okay, this, this is something I know is right, and yet I feel like I want to, and I feel this push to do what I know is wrong. We all struggle with that. We all struggle with that. And the surprise maybe is that Jesus struggled with that too. He had to fight temptation. Yes, because for some people it's unconceivable if Jesus is God and Jesus is God, that Jesus had to face temptation because nobody yeah. can uh, tempt God. God cannot be tempted. Sure, sure. Yeah, and, and that may be tough to wrap our minds around. Um, we're going we're gonna to come at some of the Bible's claims at who Jesus is. And, and we've touched on that a little bit here or there. We're really looking at who Jesus is as a man right here in our world going through our situations. And one of those situations was, was temptation. So yes, like us, um, he, he had to fight through temptation. He fought with the same difficulties, the same circumstances, the same daily interactions with people, the difficulties. Uh, he had to deal with it all just like us. And, and so in Matthew chapter chapter 4, Matthew kind of explains what took place during this 40 days in the desert where Jesus had to struggle with some pretty deep temptations. And, and it wouldn't have been just this instance. It would have been throughout his life as he went through similar situations as the rest of us where he felt the irritations of, of people that, that were pushing on him or, or how many times when his disciples... He had taught them one thing, and they just didn't get it. And Jesus had to deal with irritation, frustration. Um, he expresses that at times. Um, come on, guys, get it type of experiences. And he had, he had to deal with similar situations to us. But So what are some of the temptations of Jesus' fault? Like? Sure, yeah, yeah. And, and again, go, go to Matthew chapter 4, read through it. Right off the bat, first thing is he's been in the desert for 40 days or it's throughout that time period. And Jesus, it says, fasted. So he wanted his focus to be on God, focus to be on the mission. Uh, and he took a step back from from food. And and so he was naturally, what do you get like if you don't eat, Jackson? Well, <laughs> Yeah, like, it's, it's a combination of hunger and then uh, angry. Yeah, hang, hang, hungry, hangry. I, yeah, I've heard that word before. Yeah, it was <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, and we sometimes can get more irritated when we're hungry, and I think that's the idea. Uh, but certainly, if we don't eat or we miss maybe one meal or two meals, or maybe you miss an entire day, by the time you're done through that, you're pretty hungry. Uh, I remember at college time, there was these specific times of day where the cafeteria was open. And I had a work schedule, and I had a ministry schedule, and 
there was there was this time period where I could catch dinner on Friday night and I would not get another meal until Sunday afternoon. And by the time I got to Sunday, I was pretty hungry. I can't even imagine taking more than a month without food. And yet, scientifically, people say that, yeah, we can last maybe one to two months without food. You can't go that time without water. But it is possible to go without food. But Jesus was naturally hungry, and so where where's the first temptation go? It goes right at food. But I don't think it's about the food. So his, his temptations are a direct assault by Satan. And the first thing deals with food. And Satan says, well, if you're hungry, like I know you're hungry, I think is the background, is the idea behind it. Take this stone and turn it into bread. Number one, Jesus was hungry. Uh, we believe that Jesus had the power that he could have done exactly that. Could have turned it into bread. He could have eaten the food. And so in a way, Satan is is taunting him and saying, you're hungry, you're powerful, show me. Like, show me who you are. Get, get in there, make the food. Why not? Why not? Um, I probably would have. <laughs> yeah, I'd be hungry. Yeah, because one of the time, uh, one of the thing is, uh, sometimes we want, we we try to justify the need to do the things to have to have our need met. Sure. Yeah, we're good at rationalizing. Yeah, I want that. I feel like I want that. Let me come up with the reasons why it's okay. Yeah. And and yet Jesus doesn't do that. I think because Jesus isn't going to play Satan's game. Yeah. And so he quotes the Bible, he puts the focus back on God, and his, the point there is Jesus isn't going to follow Satan. Whether food, food, did it matter if he ate food or not? No, I don't think that's the issue. The issue is he wasn't going to play the game, and he was, he was going to stand and point back to God instead of, instead of seek, his own, seek his own benefit. Satan goes on and he tempts him again and, and tempts him with authority. Uh, authority over all that kind of takes him to a place where he can see many nations, many cities all at one time. And he says, I, I could give you all of this. And Jesus comes from this poor family. He he comes from this, this situation where there's there there was no prestige. There was um, probably ridicule. He, he doesn't have wealth. He doesn't have uh, things. And Satan's saying, here, look at it. If you're, if you're truly the Son of God, if you're truly God's Son, you deserve all this. Why not take it? I'll give it to you. And that's, again, another temptation that says, I can give you all the desires of this world. Wealth, the position, the ownership, the authority. Uh, and, and Jesus didn't have any of that. Did he deserve it? Yeah. Could he rationalize it and say, could. hey, I deserve that. Let me have it now. Why wait? Why go through the pain? Why go through the trouble? Give well, it to me now. But, well, but Jesus turned away. Jesus turns away. Yep. What what else is he tempted with? Pride. Pride. And and this is something that I think we all struggle with every day. Pride. And we naturally probably point out and see more people that struggle with pride more than other people. We say, man, they're they're an arrogant person, right? Uh, we've all met people like that, but if we're honest, if we're honest, we all struggle with pride, and it affects how we picture ourselves on social media or how we how we uh, talk about ourselves to other people. What we want to leave out of the narrative and what we want to bring into the narrative, it, it it affects how we look at ourselves, how we view ourselves. Sometimes we don't want to look at blind spots, yeah. our own struggles, because we want to see ourselves as something more. So Satan comes right at him in pride. And, and he takes him up to the temple, pinnacle of the temple, and he says, You're great. You're, you're God. Throw yourself off the temple and show us how great you are. Because the angels will come and pick you up and... And it will be a public demonstration of how special you are. And again, did Jesus deserve that? Would the angels have done that? Could he have called up that power? Yeah, yeah, he could have. Uh, but Jesus does not succumb to that. 
I think if, if I'm in that situation, maybe at this point in the game, <laughs> and it's a game, it's like this mind game that Satan's playing with you. Maybe I'm so irritated at this point, like, okay, I'm sick of all this. I'll show you. I'll show you who I am. <laughs> but Jesus doesn't do it. He wasn't going to get thrown off track. Uh, he doesn't have the focus go on himself. And and so he puts the focus back on the mission, and he knows the mission requires sacrifice. It's not about him, uh, not about exalting him right now. It's about patience to wait for sacrifice so that he can see the mission accomplished. If mission is accomplished, we praise Jesus. He's going to be exalted. But at this time, he would wait to give himself It wasn't about what he could get for himself. It wasn't about how other people would see him or seeing some amazing miracle happen at the temple. Um, He wasn't in this world for what he could get, but what he could give. Yes, definitely. Jesus is definitely the goal, I think, for us to follow to this. Uh, What happened is humility. He didn't care about improving anything. He just lived. God's mission, live God's love. So yeah. I think it's something that we all can find in our lives after. Yeah, I think we naturally want to point fingers back at ourselves. We naturally kind of want to focus on ourselves. So Jesus wasn't out to get what he could for himself, but instead he was here to live a life of love. <laughs>